What'd you think? Wasn't that pretty good? Give him a round of applause again. I don't know about you, but I'm in the mood for a Pall Mall cigarette right now. <laughs> they are mild and outstanding. Uh, so, glad you enjoyed that one. We have another good one for you to close out the night. For our second and final show this evening, we have the comedy Flywheel, Shyster and Flywheel, starring Groucho and Chico Marx. Harpo, of course, was not a part of the show for obvious reasons. The show ran from November 1932 until May of 1933 for a total of 26 episodes as part of the Esso Company's Five Star Theater, which aired a different program all five nights of the week. Now, I like this show because I'm a big Marx Brothers fan and I love the comedy, but it also has a lot of interesting history and trivia that come with it. So if you'll indulge me, for instance, the first nine shows were broadcast from New York on NBC. Groucho Chico and the show's writer Nat Perrin lived out in Hollywood. So in order to do the show for those first nine weeks, the three boys would have to take the train to New York and then do the show and then turn around and take the train back to Hollywood. The journey took three days both ways. Okay, so six days in total they lost. They had one extra. Eventually it was arranged to do the show from Hollywood, but there was a slight problem. You see, at that time, NBC did not have a West Coast outlet, so each week the show would broadcast from an empty soundstage at the RKO Pictures studio lot in Hollywood. They'd set up 30 to 40 folding chairs every week because Groucho and Chico liked a live audience, so they wanted a, a live crowd there. And right after the show was over every week, stagehands would get rid of every, everything so that RKO could film whatever picture they were working on bright and early the next morning. Another one I like about this show that you may have heard, it was originally titled Beagle, Shyster, and Beagle, but after a real lawyer in New York heard the first show, his name was Beagle too, he threatened NBC with a lawsuit and they changed Beagle to Flywheel. One more, the brothers shared a weekly salary of $6,500 in 1933, which was one of the highest that year. That's approximately $111,000 in today's money. Now, Greta Garbo back then was paid the same each week, but unlike the brothers who rehearsed maybe once each week and performed for one half hour, a half hour that was broken up by commercials and musical interludes, Garbo worked 50 to 60 hour weeks. So that's great for income inequality. And that was all during the Great Depression, so that was a lot of money. I could go on, and I probably have, but instead, let's listen to our episode tonight from January 30th, 1933, titled The Prize Fighter. The Riverside Township Radio Players, in association with the SO5 Star Theater, proudly present the Marx Brothers in Flywheel, Shyster, and Flywheel. The SO5 Star Theater, under the patronage of the Standard Oil Companies of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Louisiana, and the Colonial Beacon Oil Company, presents Groucho Marx as Waldorf T. Flywheel and Chico Marx as Emmanuel Rivelli. The curtain is rising on the law offices of Flywheel, Shyster, and Flywheel. That's Miss Dimple at the switchboard. Law offices of Flywheel, Shyster, and Flywheel. Miss Dimple speaking. Mr. Flywheel? Oh, just a second, I'll ask him. Mr. Flywheel, there's a man on the phone for you. He says he found that book you lost. Now give me the phone, I'll talk to him. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Flywheel. So you found my book, eh? Oh, you needn't bother about bringing it over. You can read it to me over the phone. Start at page 150, that's where I left off. Hello? Hello? Eh, he hung up on me after I go to the trouble of putting aside legal business just to talk to him. Oh, legal business? Why, Mr. Flywheel, you were doing a crossword puzzle. Well, is doing a crossword puzzle illegal? Say, has that assistant of mine, Ravelli, been in this morning? No, sir, he hasn't. He hasn't, eh? Well, when he gets here, tell him to go down to the post office and have our inkwells filled. And while he's there, he can mail this letter. 
But this letter has no stamp on it. Well, tell him to drop it in the box when nobody's looking. But Mr. Flywheel, a stamp only costs three cents. For three cents, I'd deliver it myself. Well, anyway, this letter is too heavy for one stamp. I think we better put two stamps on it. Nonsense. If we put two stamps on the letter, it'll still be heavier. On second thought, never mind the letter. It's just a little note to my friend Sam Jones asking for a loan of two dollars. But poor old Sam probably has his own troubles. I hardly think he can spare it. And even if he had it, I think he'd be a little reluctant to lend me the dough. He's kind of tight that way. Why, I don't think he'd let me have it if he thought I was going hungry. In fact, that guy wouldn't give me a nickel if I was starving. And he calls himself a friend. The cheap four-flushing swine. I'll show him where to get off at. Take a letter to that snake and tell him I wouldn't touch his two dollars. And if he ever comes near this office again, I'll break every bone in his body. Hello, boss. Hello, Miss Dent. Don't try to change the subject. Where have you been? I was in the barber shop getting my hair cut. I see. Getting a haircut during office hours. Uh, well, my hair grows during office hours, don't it? When you're in the office, I want, to, want you to concentrate on your work. You can grow your hair at home. Flywheel, shyster, and flywheel. Yes, Mr. Ravelli is here. Who's calling? Who? Oh, Mr. Ravelli, there's a man on the phone who wants to talk to you. He says his name is One Brown Gumbats. Oh, that's a, my new prize fighter. I'll talk to him. Hello. One Round? How you feel? That's a fine. Yeah? That's a fine. Hmm. That's a fine. Goodbye. Boss, I just got us some bad news. Bad news? Well, that's a fine. My new prize fighter, he don't feel so good today. You've got a fighter? Where'd you get him? It was easy. I was at the prize fights watching him fight, and the other guy, he knocked him right into my lap. So that's how you picked him up. I, I don't pick him up. Tree ushers, they pick him up. Oh, that's too bad. Well, did you have to carry him home? Not one round combats. They don't have to carry him home. They carry him to the hospital. Ravelli, I'd be better off if they carried you there instead. Uh, no, no, boss. We're going to make plenty of money with one round combats. He's going to sign a contract with me as soon as he learns to write his name. Well, that's a good one. Who's going to sign your name? Combats. He's learning that, too. Yeah, pretty soon, boss, we're going to own a fighter. We're going to own him? Well, that's fine. Run down to the pawn shop and see what we can get for him. Well, I would, but I don't know what he wants. Come in, come in, whoever you are. Excuse me. Are you Mr. Flywheel? Am I Mr. Flywheel? But before I answer that, there's one thing I want to know. Yes? Are you Mrs. Flywheel? Certainly not. All right, then. I'm Mr. Flywheel. And I bet I can guess who you are. Well, then, who am I? I give up. Who are you? <laughs> I give up, too. And I wasn't even playing. My name, gentlemen, is Mrs. Willoughby. And you come bursting in here just to tell us that? You misunderstand. I came to your office to transact some business. You want to use my office for your business? No, 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 gentlemen. I'm here for legal advice. I've just been left a very large estate with considerable money, and it's causing me problems with my income tax. I thought perhaps you might be able to help. Help? With your income tax? A big woman like you? You pay your own taxes. Taxes? Hey, I got a brother living in taxes. Quiet. We're talking about taxes. Money. Dollars. Uh, that's where my brother lives. Dollars, taxes. Mm. See, it was worth waiting for, wasn't it? Ravelli, why don't you bore a hole in yourself and let the sap run out? Gentlemen, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, madam, what you don't know won't hurt you. And that ought to make you practically safe from anything. And I didn't come here to be insulted. Then you must be in the wrong office. Keep quiet, Ravelli. I can defend myself. Now, uh, just what is the problem with this income tax? They're asking for far too much in light of my recent inheritance. I have a tax form here. Most of it I don't understand. Now here, let me see that. Hmm. Yeah, well, this income tax isn't very entertaining reading. 
You haven't got an amusement tax with you instead. I'm afraid it's rather complicated. Complicated? Why a child of four could explain this document? Ravelli, run out and see if you can find a child of four. <laughs> it's a no wonder. It's a guy of no pictures. He is dumb, isn't he, folks? Now let's see. We'll start at the beginning. It says here, are you a resident of the United States? <laughs> That's a crazy. Everybody know Herbert Hoover is the resident of the United States. There's my argument, restrict immigration. Say, here's a good one. A fiduciary filing a return for an estate and process of administration may claim in lieu of this deduction provided in section 162A of the Acts of 1922B. That sounds perfectly dreadful. Well, you don't think the second act's going to be any better, do you? I saw this form on Broadway last week and it stunk the whole place up. But what does it mean? Basically, my dear Mrs. Willoughby, it means you should let me worry about your money and Uncle Sam worry about his taxes. What you need is a tax loss. A what? You know, a bit like Ravelli here, only a tax loss instead of a dead loss. Uh, so how's about it, lady? You want to buy a prize fighter? A prize fighter? Yes, madam. He punches like a mule. And if you don't believe it, I can have him punch you around a little. I see. You want me to invest in him and put it against my taxes. Hmm. Some people have been trying to interest me in a wholesale grocery, which I can buy for $10,000. Well, what would you want with $10,000 worth of groceries? Why, well, you can get a regular dinner for 65 cents. Anyway, it's not enough. The loss would need to be in the $200,000 region. Well, why didn't you say so? Ravelli, lock the door and tie it to the chair. Ah! Now, Mrs. Willoughby, I've got just the thing for you. A prize fighter. I don't want a prize fighter. Well, if it's the price that stands in your way, you don't have to worry. You can buy our fighter on the installment plan. $10 down and $10 when he gets up. And I'm telling you I'm not interested in your prize fighter. Uh, maybe she's all right, boss. It's no use buying gum bats unless she buys the referee, too. All right, then. But um, could I interest you in a pugilist? Perhaps I'm not making myself clear. I distinctly said I don't want anything of that kind. Uh, very well, then. Let's, let's forget about it. Uh, uh, Mrs. Willoughby... How would you like to invest the money in a heavyweight boxer? No, 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 Mr. Flywheel. What I want is some sound adv financial advice. Now, I'm currently sponsoring the Rome Philharmonic visit to this country. They open at the Carnegie Hall tomorrow night. You may both join me in my private box. Why, you're coming apart? <sighs> but by then, I expect you to have come up with a no-nonsense, gilt-edge idea as to a suitable tax loss. Now, is that clear? Yes, perfectly clear. We'll come up with a no-nonsense, gilt-edge idea. But I warn you, it's going to be a prize fighter. This, boss, is the last hope, Jim. Gumbats, he come here all of the time when he's in training. Hey, there he is now. Uh, uh, hello there, Mr. Ravelli. Look, I'm skipping. Hello, Peluca. This is my boss, Mr. Flywheel. Hey, what's the big idea you saying hello, Peluca? Well, what do you think? Just because you're a Peluca, I don't say hello? Say, Mr. Flywheel... Ravelli said you was going to get me a new fighting suit. Well, the canvas was wearing through your old one, so I thought it was the least I could do. It's all in this bag. Hey, there's only one shoe. So blame Ravelli. I told him to have your shoes half sold, and he sold one to the janitor. And uh, 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 look at them red socks. They're too loud. Uh, well, uh, your feet won't fall asleep. <laughs> That's a some joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that was funny, Mr. Ravelli. <laughs> All that money on speech lessons, and look where it wound up. Now I see why you two get on so well together. 
Uh, come on now, one round. Get to work. What do you want me to do? I, I think some road work. She fix you up fine. You run down to the beach. Hey, that's too far. That's ten miles. Uh, what are you talking? Ten miles. Ain't I going there with you? Well... Well, then it's only five miles apiece. Say, I never thought of that. Well, don't worry about that for now, One Round. We've lined you up about for tomorrow night. You'll be fighting Cyclone Wilson. But there's no need to bother yourself about anything. We've paid all your hospital bills in advance. I'm worried about this, though. I don't think I'm in good shape. Uh, you'll be in good shape. We'll let you fight in a corset. However, I'll still find out if you're in good condition. Ravelli, get me a pair of boxing gloves. I want to take a sock at Gombat's. I ain't got no gloves, boss. But here's a chair you can hit him with. Hey, wait a minute. What am I going to get for this fight? Gombat's, I was figuring it out this morning. It seems to me that for my share as manager, of $5,000 would be reasonable. And then, of course, there are also other items, uh, training expenses, 40 cents, movie tickets for me and my girl, a dollar and a half. But she paid for the tickets, so we'll make it a dollar. Now, let's see, that leaves you exactly $2.80. Hey, boss, so what about me? Well, he's right, Gombats. I think Ravelli ought to get that 280 Say, I thought this was going to be a thousand dollar poise. Hey, Palooka, for the money you're going to get, you won't need any poise. You mean I ain't going to get nothing out of this fight? Now, don't get excited. We bought something for you. Yeah, what did you buy? The referee. Yeah, but boss, how are we going to see the fight tomorrow night if we got to go see Mrs. Willoughby as well? There's a no way the orchestra finish in time. Never fear, Ravelli. The solution is really quite simple. I'll buy the conductor as well. A uh, uh, doorman, doorman, have the Rome Philharmonic started playing yet? No, sir. You're just in time. I was afraid you were going to say that. Now I'm going to have to sit through the whole thing with Mrs. Willoughby. Uh, yes, sir. She's in her private box up the main stairs and to the right, sir. I don't suppose there's a long cut I could take, is there? Uh, sir? Never mind, I'll find it. At last, you're here, Mr. Flywheel. Why, Mrs. Willoughby, hello. Though I must say I'm surprised you have the nerve to show your face in public. Why not? You get away with it. Mr. Flywheel, I'm very angry with you. When you phoned yesterday and advised me to put money into Gombat's canning company, I naturally assumed it was a bona fide business venture. Well, it is. His name is Gombat's, and tonight he'll get canned. Then he, I assume, is the reason I've been receiving a steady stream of bills all related in some way to boxing. So, what's a little money trouble between man and wife? But we're not married. All right, I accept. I'll wear white. But if you really love me, you won't show up. That settles it. I'm through with the whole mess. Oh, don't desert him now, madam. One round gombats needs a woman's care. He's just a kid at heart. You ought to see him cutting out paper dolls. We could settle down, just the three of us. Me, gombats, and your money. I'm sure that would suit you very well. And Mrs. Willoughby, uh, may I call you Alice? Why? Do you think I look like an Alice? No, I think you look like a Frank, but I'm keeping quiet about it. This is intolerable. Oh, Mr. Flywheel, you've given me nothing. Nothing but insults and bad advice. Given? Madam, you'll pay for that bad advice. That settles it. I'm through. I mean it this time. I'm through with you, I'm through with your assistant, and I'm through with this fighter. <laughs> Thanks for putting me through my paces before the fight, Mr. Jackson. Yeah, don't mention it one round. When I promote a fighter, I like to make sure that all the fighters are in trim. 
Here, hit my hand. <sighs> oh, okay. Oh, 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 whoops. Hey, missed. Mind the lockers there. One round. I just had them reinstalled. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson. Oh, flywheel, Ravelli, you're here. Yeah, we managed to get a ride in Mrs. Willoughby's car. Only don't tell Mrs. Willoughby, because she doesn't know yet. Besides, you don't think we miss your big fight, do you? He's right, one round. Why, we heard the crowd cheering as we came in. They love you, Gombats. They want you to win. But win or lose, they hope you get killed. Huh? Okay. I'm gonna go see how the other fight's going. You two's better get your man ready. He's up next. Combats, in a little while, you'll be out in front of that crowd fighting. Your mother will be at home, listening at the radio. I ain't got no mother. What do you think this is, a Lassie movie? Just remember, we've done everything we could for you. We've paid the referee to give you the decision. We've paid the other fighter to let you win. Now, Gombats, the rest is up to you. All you gotta do is remember everything I told you. Uh, what's that, Mr. Ravelli? Uh, I don't know, I forgot. Ravelli, make yourself useful. Run over to Cyclone Wilson's dressing room and ask him to wear red fighting trunks so Gombats will know him when they meet in the ring. Uh, okay, boss. Mr. Flywheel, I got terrible news. Wilson's run out on us. We can't find him any place. Uh, don't worry about that, Mr. Jackson. Gombats is much better when he fights alone. Well, I, I go in there and fight him myself, but I've got my glasses on. Ravelli, it's up to you. Have you got another pair of glasses? I don't want to fight him either. Ravelli, you're going in to fight for Wilson. All right, I go in and fight for Wilson if somebody else go in and fight for me. Come on, put on those gloves. I don't need no gloves. My hands ain't cold. I better go announce this change. Come on as soon as you're ready. Now let's go over everything one more time. Combats, don't forget. You go down for a count of four in the third round. Ravelli, you go down for the count of three in the fourth round. A no, you, you go down for the count of five and the... Well, never mind. The referee has all the instructions. <laughs> hey, boss, let's uh, walk down the other aisle. Here comes Mrs. Willoughby. Mr. Flywheel, I thought I might find you here. Oh, I, uh, Mrs. Willoughby, I, I didn't know you were a fight fan. Who are you rooting for? You know perfectly well I'm not. It's occurred to me that out of all the money I gave to you, there seems to be a sum of $5,000 unaccounted for. Well, have no fear, Mrs. Willoughby. I was lucky enough to get in on a very sound investment with that $5,000. Well, I'm glad you've done at least one sensible thing. Now, just what did you do with the money? Madam... I took that $5,000 and bet it on one round combats. What? You wagered the money? Well, it's too late to change your mind now, Mrs. Willoughby. You've made your bet. Now lie in it. Oh, really? Now, Ravelli, you're going into that ring, and you may never come out again. Before you step through those ropes, is there anything you want to say? Uh, yeah, boss. I'd like to ask a question. What building has 300 stories and no elevator? I give up, Ravelli. What building has 300 stories and no elevator? A public library. <laughs> uh, that's a, some joke, huh? Get in that ring, Ravelli. Now, don't forget you're supposed to take a beating. But while you're taking it, remember, Mrs. Willoughby and myself will be out here cheering. Main bout. Ten rounds to a decision. In this corner, one round Gumbats, the terror of the east side. Woo! And in this corner, Emmanuel Ravelli, the pride of the gas house district. Woo! Wait a minute. Ravelli, is that a horseshoe I feel in your glove? Sure. I put it there for good luck. All right, boys, go to it. If you need me, I'll be right here. Well, folks, McIntyre here, bringing you a round-by-round -round account of the big fight. Zowie, there they go. Gumbats is leading, but Ravelli is close behind, chasing him around the ring. Ravelli's in a corner. 
He's fighting back savagely, thus proving the old adage that if you get a rat in a corner, he'll fight back. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, what a battle. And there's a blow from Gumbats. What an almighty punch. Lucky for Ravelli, he was tying a shoelace. This is some contest. Folks, I'm gonna put the mic in the ring so you can hear the grunting of the gladiators, the pounding of leather against leather. Listen to this. Hey, Gumbats, what's the matter with you? You hit me that time. Oh, what about you? You got me covered all in blood. I know, but it's my blood. Hey, Flywheel, I'm tired. Stop the round. We can't, Ravelli. The timekeeper can't find his watch. Tell him to look in my back pocket. Hear that, folks. What a battle. What a battle. Gumbats looks great. Gumbats looks masterful. Gumbats is down. He looks even better when he's down. Listen to the count. One, two, three. Get up, Gombats, get up. Four, five, six. Get up, Gombats, how am I going to explain to Mrs. Willoughby? Seven, eight, nine. You forgot eight and a half. Ten. Folks, the winner is Emmanuel Ravelli. Oh. Ravelli, Ravelli, come here. <sighs> Well, I guess I did it pretty good, huh, boss? I thought you were supposed to throw the fight. I did throw it. Ah, oh, yeah, boss, I make a mistake. I throw it the wrong way. See, here come Mrs. Willoughby. I think I go back in the ring. Mr. Flywheel, this is terrible. I saw the whole thing. You've thrown away that $5,000 with your preposterous bet. Now calm down, Mrs. Willoughby. I'll get your money back in no time. But first, I'll need another $5,000. Another $5,000? Mr. Flywheel, you're not getting another cent out of me. All I wanted was a simple little plan to save me paying too much income tax. And this is it. It's so simple I could have kicked myself for not thinking of it earlier. Mrs. Willoughby, how would you feel about a rematch? Oh! Hey, boss, how you feel? Uh, they been treating you good at this hospital? Ah, oh, not so bad. The swelling around the eye has gone down a little. Uh, that's a good, because you're being discharged today. So soon? But I'm nowhere near well enough. I know, but Mrs. Willoughby, she buy the hospital so she can throw you out. But it's her fault I'm in here. Sure, sure thing, but that was some punch, huh? Maybe we should have put her in the ring. Quiet, Ravelli. I still haven't forgiven you for giving her the boxing glove. But she asked so nice. Yes, but why did you have to give her the one with the horseshoe in it? Uh, you better put on your clothes, boss. Here comes Mrs. Willoughby now. Mr. Flywheel. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Willoughby. We're leaving. In fact, nothing could persuade me to stay a moment longer. Why, in all the time I've been here, I haven't seen one cockroach. And if it's not good enough for them, it's certainly not good enough for me. Come, come, Mr. Flywheel. You're not going anywhere. I've had a complete change of heart. You have? Hmm, well, maybe this isn't such a bad hospital after all. Do you think they could give Ravelli a complete change of brain? Now, Mr. Flywheel, you ought to stay here. I've instructed the doctors to give you the best medical treatment money can buy and to let me know the minute you're completely well. Wait a minute. So I'll know just when to hit him again. This concludes our SO5 Star Theater presentation for this evening. Brought to you by the Standard Oil Companies of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Louisiana, and the Colonial Beacon Oil Company. These associated companies maintain a system of service stations from Maine to Texas. You have been listening to Flywheel, Shyster, and Flywheel with the musical and sound effect talents of Marty McNulty. <laughs> Tonight's voice talents includes, as the ever so helpful Carnegie Hall doorman, Tom Duggan.
the boxing match referee was Jay Summerfield. Jackson, Gombath's fight promoter and trainer, was played by Andre Dixon. <laughs> Flywheel's flighty secretary, Miss Dimple, was played by Donna Amesmeyer. The tough but not too bright prize fighter, one round Gombath's, was expertly played by Allison Byhun. The very wealthy and very blusterly Mrs. Willoughby was played by Sue Gajinski. <laughs> Groucho Marx as Waldorf T. Flywheel was played by Jacob Palka. And Chico Marx as Emmanuel Ravelli was played by Herb Thompson. Your host and fight announcer was played by myself. This is John Byhun signing off for the SO Five Star Theater and the Riverside Township Radio Players. And one last time, here's our director for this month, Jacob Palka. I, I think John's ready to fly right on out of here. <laughs> um, I still want that cigarette if anybody has palm oil with you. It might be old. Um, so I hope you enjoyed both of our shows tonight. Um, we had a lot of fun doing them, obviously, and we hope you enjoyed watching them. Um, I want to thank a few more people again. Keep it going for Marty McNulty, who's our whiz, our Foley man. <laughs> Does a wonderful job. Uh, I want to thank John Gesselmino and Lorenzo Cordova for filming and doing our audio. Uh, I want to thank Andre over there, Tweedy, the fabulous Dr. Tweedy, for putting up our uh, videos online so that you can all watch them again and again and again and again on YouTube. Give him a round of applause. Since 2008, he says, so you can really binge watch the Riverside Township radio players from 2008. Um, I want to thank Amy Nieves, who is actually in the audience, because she does kind of all our publicity on Facebook and stuff, and she's always taking pictures and documenting, so give her a round of applause. And finally, uh, with, we couldn't be here without the support of the Riverside Township. Uh, we've been doing this for 20 years, right? So they've been behind us all the way. So give them a round of applause, too, for their support. And so um, we've got one more show uh, this year, this season, uh, next month in May. And I'm very pleased to introduce the director for that month is Sue Gaczynski. I'm the director for the May show. It's called After the Thin Man, starring, originally starring William Powell and Myrna Loy. Uh, he's an extraordinary detective. I think you'll be interested in how things work out. And our next show is a week earlier than usual. It's going to be on May 17th. Not the fourth week, but the third week of May. So please join us next, next month, February 7th, excuse me, May 17th, right here, 7.30, and thank you for coming tonight. Do you have anything else to say, Jacob? No. Okay, that's it. Enjoy, and, and we'll see you next month.